Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're out at New Bethel Church. We're here with Marge Alligoo with the Dublin After Five. And you all have an excellent opportunity again for our community to turn out and enjoy a wonderful event, don't you, Marge? Yes, we do. Share with us about that. Well, um, we have an excellent speaker coming up. And um, she is Kim Michael Pallote. And she's actually a celebrity. And you will find out. I would suggest that you Google her so that you can find out a little bit about her before you come to the meeting, mm -hmm. because she is awesome. I have met her, I will be hosting her, and I'm looking forward to it, and um, I just can't say enough about Kim Michael Pallot. Well, you all are going through a type of training or seminar today in which we, she's here now. What is this seminar about today? We are, we are in a we're becoming leaders of our mission. And this is a Stonecroft leadership training for the southern part of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And we have clubs from all over, or Connections. We changed our name to Connections mm -hmm. so that the ladies would not feel that they had to be a member. Yeah, you just know, getting it, connected. It's just being connected, and sure. all ladies are invited. Any lady can come. And anyone can come to the event coming up Thursday, right? That's right. Any any lady can come to the event coming up on Thursday. Um, we actually have um, a, a, a luncheon at 11.30, and you can make reservations for the luncheon by calling Emily at 272-0136 or Jane at 595-2499. Now, at 6.30, you could join us at Dublin After Five by calling Diane at 272-6341, or you could call me at 875-3948. Well, Marge, you ladies sure do work hard. You know, throughout the years, you have had many events, but this one is very special. And you have uh, lined it up for us to have the opportunity to be able to speak to Miss. Pallote. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Ms. Pallote came in today for some further training because she is a new speaker for Stonecroft Ministries. And we're so excited. And she's here to meet with her speaker trainer while we're doing our training. And I just thought, wow, she's here a week before our meeting. Mm -hmm. And I said, I've got to call TV 35. <laughs> So I called Ron, and he agreed to come out. And we wanted all of you to know about this because this is an important opportunity for you to come and um, hear a speaker and someone who has a gorgeous voice and just has talents galore. All right, well. And, um, and we also want to let you know that we have Susie O'Neill coming as our special feature. She is a retired teacher, and she's also a master gardener, and she will be teaching us how to do sustained uh, container gardening. And a lot of people are getting back into gardening. Mm -hmm. And they container are. gardening at that. Yes, so that's, and container that's a great gardening at that. Mm -hmm. well, we're looking forward to the event, and we'll take a short break and be back and speak with Kim in just a moment. Thank you, Marge. Thank you. This special event is brought to you by Dublin Chevrolet, the only dealer you will ever need. Everybody loves mom, and now is your chance to let mom know just how much you appreciate her by entering her in the TV35 Mom and Me Selfie Contest. All you have to do is like the TV35's Facebook page and add your Mom and Me Selfie for your chance to win mom Great prizes, including dinner for four at Dino's, a $100 surprise gift box from The Exchange, a set of beautiful hanging baskets from Highway 80 Roadside Market, an award-winning cake complete with your Mom and Me selfie from Williamson's Bakery, and much, much more. Winners will be drawn May 8th, so like the TV35 Facebook page, add your Mom and Me selfie, and show Mom just how much you love and appreciate her. Happy Mother's Day from all of us at TV35. This special event is brought to you by Dublin Chevrolet, the only dealer you will ever need. Take a step back in time at Dublin International Market. Are you looking for something unique and different to complement your home? You will find it here. 
From vintage 1930s Mahjong table to mid-19th century display case, Dublin International Market is filled with a vast selection of antiques, collectibles, home decor, and more. Come shop our 12,000 square feet of timeless quality and character. We are open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. and Sunday noon to 5 p.m. Dublin International Market is conveniently located at 708 East Jackson Street, Dublin. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to New Bethel Baptist Church, where a ladies' seminar is going on today in preparation for a special event coming up in our community. And at the special event, we're going to have a speaker come in. This is our speaker for the special event for the Dublin Christian Women's Club and Dublin After Five Club. And her name is Kim Michael Pelote. And Ms. Pelote is from Savannah. I'm glad I got your name and right that time. You're doing so Kim. well. And Mark. you are too. I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of you too. <laughs> now, you grew up in Savannah. Yes, I did. I'm homegrown. I've lived there all my life. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful city. It is. It is it a is. beautiful city. I love the town of Savannah. I do too. Isn't there so much energy there and people are so friendly and they really inviting. are. And Much I, like our town, but a little larger. You know, it's, it's to me, it's it's an in-between spot from the city of Atlanta and the town of Dublin. Yes, it's a happy middle place. Mm -hmm. But so much rich history. It is. You know, and that's the fun part. Um, a celebration of history. In school, history wasn't one of my favorite subjects. <laughs> However, as I've grown and um, I'm able now to kind of celebrate the, the, the legacy of the history there, and even, you know what, Ron, you know what I had a chance to do? I had a chance to portray a historical character in the documentary on the Civil War in Savannah. Now that was pretty exciting for me. Mm -hmm. really yes, uh, you portrayed uh, a nurse. Susie King Taylor. Yeah, and Susie King Taylor was the only documented uh, African American, wasn't she, in the, in the Civil War? I just love a man that does his homework, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it was fascinating to me when I saw that because that's something you took on a little bit later after you'd already, I would say, become established in life. You, you, had, uh, you had a lot going on in your life and all the things that yes. you've done, and then uh, a local person came to you and said, would you take on this role? They saw what you had in you. They saw the, the love for life, the joy you have. Uh, they saw your ability uh, to to relate to people and ask you to step forward and do that role now. What did you think? Was that a daunting task or? Yes, it was. That that costume was very hot. <laughs> and uh, I felt like I was part nun, part Susie King Taylor, you know, the old school nuns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but And then the other exciting aspect of it was that I was just reading a book about Susie King Taylor when he called and asked me if I would portray Susie. And I was so it was just one of those moments like, It's wow. amazing the way the, the Lord will work through things. Exactly. Because you do have a message. It, you do have the joy of, of Jesus in you. It's, it's obvious that if you just read about you and, and see photographs of you, and, and I'm just meeting you. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just getting accustomed to Pelote. I'm just trying to make <laughs> sure I get your name right and, and make sure the community <laughs> sees just what you have to offer because you do have a lot to offer. And, and for our community to be able to turn out and, and witness this firsthand. But if you will permit me, I, I want to step back now okay. in time with you. Okay. okay. Because this is my opportunity to get to know you and, and to share you with our community. Now, okay. growing up in Savannah, in the Savannah area, mm -hmm. uh, you had uh, a couple of sisters. I'm a middle child, Ron. Mm -hmm. I'm the one with problems. Uh, you had a brother, that's right. I have a brother and a sister, and I'm the middle. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, I'm, I'm just one of the happiest middle children I've ever met. Oh, good. It was a great place to be. Mm -hmm. You blew that theory out of the water. It's just, it's just yeah. a myth, Ron. Yeah, Don't it believe is. it. Sure it is. Yeah. Okay, but growing up in the Michael household, <laughs> yes, uh, you guys like to sing a lot. We did. Everyone sang, didn't they? Everyone sang. My brother played the guitar. Um, my father, he even had a nice voice, and he could whistle like nobody's business. He was really good whistling. Mm -hmm. My mom loved music. And even as a child, you know, we celebrated Johnny Mercer's music. Because, Ron, you know, Johnny was born and raised in Savannah, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Johnny Mercer uh, Theater. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Mm -hmm. But, you know, one of, the most, one of the most fun things we did, we would do shows at home. We entertained ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we were everybody from Dolly Parton to Aretha Franklin. 
<laughs> Ron, we had a ball. And every Sunday night, we'd watch the Ed Sullivan Show. Mm. The Ed Sullivan Show. You remember that? <laughs> oh, that, that'll take everybody way back. Yes. And some can't go back that far. Now. No, they can't. No, but, but that entertainment, that family entertainment, that, you know, when you see people that way now, or, you know, whenever, families that enjoy music, families that enjoy each other's company, right. uh, that sing all the time, people that are just filled with, uh, with music, with joy. You know, music's such a great way to express yourself. You know what, Ron, it's funny that you say that. It really is. And it's not about singing on key. It's just mm -hmm. about singing. Oh, well, thank you okay. for saying that. With that said, Ron is going to sing with me next Thursday. I'll hum or I'll whistle. How about that? And, and you do the singing. But when I'm talking about singing, you, you grew up in the household. Yes. Uh, listening to a lot of music, I'm assuming, on the radio or television, wherever the, the source was coming in at the moment. And, yes. And you learned the songs. Of course, um, you know, Johnny Mercer, you... Uh, in that area, everybody was enamored by his ability, and I then really throughout the nation and, and you know in the world, he was amazing. Just uh, turned out so much quantity and quality. Yes, yes, and I happened to have been friends with his niece, mm -hmm. Nancy. Mm -hmm. Ron, you would have loved Nancy, and she passed. I think it was about four years ago, and she asked me maybe 10 years ago, if I'd sing at her funeral. And I didn't really want to talk about that, Yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. But she instructed me the very song that she wanted, and indeed when she passed, it was in writing, and we did it. And as only in Savannah and in the South, in Bonaventure Cemetery, we sang and we had ice cream at Nancy's gravesite. How often do you do that, Ron? Tutti Fruity was Tutti Fruity. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, it really is. It yes. was a celebration. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you sang? I sang Skylark, which was her favorite song. Yeah. You know, but you know, Ron, it, it, it is a celebration, uh, particularly during this season. And I, I, I'm not a politically correct woman. I, I, really, like, I really like the celebration of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And I know... You know, it's just so much more than what we see. It's so much more than what we see. Yeah, yeah. And, and you feel so much more than you see. Yes. And you sing, and your emotion comes out in, in the songs that you sing. What's the first song you ever remember singing in front of a church group? Because that's probably where you sang first, right? <laughs> in front of a group. Yes. Or at school? Which it was one? in church. Okay. This Little Light of Mine. Uh -huh. This little light of mine, and with the song that day came the challenge to let your light shine. You ever seen people that sometimes they somewhat diminish their light so that other people feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. That is so not cool. Everybody has a light. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, though, the bumps along the road cause you to allow other people to dim your light. They didn't do it to you. You openly gave them permission. Mm -hmm. But your light is under your mandate, your, you know, and, and you know it's not your light, but the, the light. Mm -hmm. Shining through you. The light. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I'm gonna tell you, Ron, next Thursday it's not gonna be about me. I'm not coming here to entertain, impress, or for them to point to me. I'm just a musical bird dog, and it's not, <laughs> it's so much bigger than me. So much bigger mm -hmm. than me. You give credit where credit's due. I have to. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a short break and be back. We have a few more questions for Kim, so stay with us, okay? April showers bring me flowers, and Century 21 is the number one realtor in Lawrence County. What do these two things have in common? Spring is a great time to buy or sell your home. So call Century 21 today and let Jody Tanner, Jim Jarrett, Pam Tillery, David Deeves, Beverly Forbes, Ann Adams, Raina Doverly, Benny Helton, Charlene Brantley, Ruth Watson, Jay Brantley, Charlene Lamp, Yvonne Robertson, Karen Widmer, and broker George Dirt help you buy or sell your home. So log on to C21Dublin.com today. Century 21 Dirt and Cornegate. Hello, I'm Jennifer Dickerson with Integrity Hospice. 
We're very excited this year to be having a team at Relay for Life. That's going to be May the 12th. That's the Friday before Mother's Day from 6 until midnight. And the theme this year is board games, electronic games. We're going to be shoots and ladders. We're going to have lots of fun stations, hot cheesy nachos, cotton candy, a ducky pond for the kids with prizes, a picture booth for memories, silent auction table. We're very proud to be a sponsor of Relay for Life and our team's very excited to show our support for those in the community. Trust, compassion, and dignity. We are Integrity Hospice. And we welcome you back. We're speaking with Kim Pelote, and she's going to be the speaker at the After Five, Dublin After Five, as well as the Christian Women's Club, coming up at the Country Club. It's coming up next Thursday at 11.30 next and 6.30. That's right. Yeah, and, and you're bringing a lot to the table now here. People should want to turn out and see you. Because um, we want to go back again. We're talking about some of the things you've accomplished in life. Now, you sang for presidents. Yes, and you know, one of my favorite moments was with President Carter. I, I really like Plains, Georgia is indeed very plain, but it's not where you're at, it's who you're with. Mm -hmm. And when you're there and the Carters are there and the congregation's there, they're so warm, they're friendly. You, and and uh, the last time I was there was last January. And as a matter of fact, my my friend Paula Dean was with me on that one, and uh, I'll just say we had a really good time. <laughs> <laughs> and you ate well, too, I hope. We did. But she didn't cook for you, did she? No, Not but then. afterwards we went to a bed and breakfast and had a wonderful lunch with President and Mrs. Carter. Mm -hmm. Ron, they asked me if I'd join the choir. <laughs> You'll be there every <laughs> Sunday now, huh? How about that? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we just look so forward to the performance next Thursday and to hearing you not only speak but sing because you sang in church, you, you sang along, and you, you went to college. You, you studied business and music, was it? Yes. You know what? It's a funny thing, too, Ron. I, um, before I could graduate, I married, had three children. I'm divorced now. The song goes on. The melody, it's funny how all of our lives are a song, but the melody may change. Mm -hmm. However, the song continues. Mm -hmm. And some of the notes will be high, some will be low. But your song, you, you have to continue to sing your song, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. Okay, it just so happens that with the song of my life, I actually do sing. But all of us in the life we live are living the song of our lives. You know, and I, and I encourage everybody to, to sing. Don't stop singing and don't let anybody let you stay on a low note. It's okay to get there sometimes, but get up. Well, we're all going to get there. We're going to get there. Uh, you make a reference in, in uh, something that I was reading, I believe, where you're, uh, the messes that happen in your life turn into a message. There's always a message in your mess. Mm -hmm. And there's a triumph in your trial. And I'm not trying to be lyrically fancy, but it's just the truth. And you, oftentimes if you focus on what is the problem, you're not able to focus on the problem solver. Okay, so well, we'll talk a little bit more about what all you've done because you've accomplished quite a bit in your life now. Uh, you uh, have an Oxnard gold medal. Oh, Tell me about that. Oh, Ron, you've done your homework, my brother. That is a wonderful, a wonderful competition. I'm not the biggest competition person, but it's a vocal competition that's held in Savannah, and we are leading into our, fit, our 25th year. This is our silver anniversary of this competition that embraces all genres of American traditional music. And it's funny because that's exactly what we did at home. When I was coming, I, I didn't know that I was, you know, really. Preparing. You were being exactly, prepared for it. That my journey was setting the stage that would really, really continue on even into my adult life. So this competition takes place usually around February, March, and there are competitors from all over the world. One year we had someone from Switzerland competing, they sing. And once your application is accepted and you're asked and you're chosen to come and perform live, mm -hmm. you have to perform exactly what you performed on your demonstration mm -hmm. CD to be accepted. And then there's a quarterfinal, semifinal, and a final round, each round with different songs. And I won it, $10,000 in 2001. And it was just amazing. Gold medal. Gold. That's impressive. Some people call me the golden girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they call you a couple of different things too now. Yes, the, they do. the anthem girl, the <laughs> anthem, is that right? Ron, I really like singing the national anthem. Mm -hmm. 
Why? Because I think we live in the best country. I mean, everywhere that I'm blessed to be able to travel, I'm always happy to come back home. I love traveling. Uh, but the national anthem is something that you really need to think about. Think about those words. Think about, you know, the bloodshed here. Mm -hmm. Think about the, found, the founding fathers of our country. Mm -hmm. Some truths you can't, uh, you can't alter. The truth is the truth. That's right. How we were founded. Mm -hmm. This country is great. Mm -hmm. And that is why on my um, latest CD, here's the sales pitch, on my latest, <laughs> on my latest CD, Change, Ron, I want to, change to be the title because change depends on you and me yes. change depends on you you know not not being changed in a negative way by things happening to you but daring to elevate yourself to change in a way of you becoming more a part of the solution mm -hmm. not complaining about the problem i don't need to talk about you ron unless i'm going to offer you a solution to help you mm -hmm. that's right and if i'm going to talk about you i need to talk to you about you mm -hmm. if there's a problem mm -hmm. Okay, And so I think that change is, is just an initiative for each and every one of us to be a part of the change in our country. Because what I do at home affects the country. What you do at home affects this country. Sure. The energy that you that you're, you know, spreading at home is going out into the world. Mm -hmm. What are you doing about that? What are you doing, Ron? What, what kind of it? energy is it? What kind? Yeah. What kind? Mm -hmm. And we all can change in a positive way. We can change in a negative way, but we're talking about changing in positive ways. And once right. you see something that you're doing, once you see an issue, once yeah. you appreciate, let's just talk about it. Once we appreciate diversity and we understand the strengths in diversity, yes, then we become more empowered. We become a stronger nation, stronger community, a stronger home. That's right. Yeah. I think diversity is beautiful. I do too. If there were only one flower, wouldn't that be sad? <laughs> wouldn't that be sad, Ron? Yeah, if there were only one song. Yes. No matter how good that song was. Exactly. You'd say, listen, I'm tired of you singing that song every day. You're going to have to give out. You're going to have to whistle it for a while or something. Like that. And <laughs> even at that, you, hey, you've opened for some great people, though. You've had an opportunity. Now, you came out with that first CD, and then you went to a concert. Yes. Who was that, Harry Connick? Harry Connick Jr. Yeah. How'd you show up at that concert? Oh, my brother Somebody from another mother. My brother from another <laughs> mother, Ron. And you waved your CD at him down front. And Ron, it was so funny. I was with 12 of my friends, yeah. okay? And so, basically, I just wanted to get my CD in Harry's hands. Yeah, yeah. And so we were way in the back of the orchestra section on the floor. And then, all of a sudden, as the, as the show progressed, Harry said, what's, what's with these six seats up here that's empty? And I was on the aisle chair. Ron, you would have thought I was a river dancer. I got up there so quickly, and I had a seat. I forgot about my friends. And I was up there with the CD. And so at the time that Harry stopped playing one particular song, he stood up from the piano, came near the, the front of the stage talking, and he looked at me and said, you're awfully happy. And, I, <laughs> and so I stood up doing a Holy Ghost wave with my CD. Mm. And then he said, is that for me? And the rest is history. Next thing I knew, Ron, I was up on stage singing at last with Harry in the orchestra. And then when he came back almost two years ago, he called me up there again. It was so fun. I just left New York in September, you know, being in the audience with his new show. Ah. It was amazing, Ron. You seem to make friends very well. I imitated the lion from The Wizard of Oz <laughs> when they had an audience <laughs> party. <laughs> <laughs> you see the energy nice. we're sharing here, ladies and gentlemen. We want you to turn out next Thursday, <laughs> six thirty, and also at eleven thirty in the morning. Whichever one suits your schedule, and, and we want to see you there at the Dublin Country Club and enjoy this energy. Now, you not only sing, but you're um, a motivational speaker. You come in and yes. help uh, churches, business, women's groups, men's groups. Um, if something's going on, people need a little more energy, or they need. Uh, you know, just to maybe have a little light shined in. Uh, yes. And yes. You'll do that. Prisoners, some who are behind bars and some who are walking around appearing as if they're free. Yes. And you know what else, Ron? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I, I tell you what, one of, the, one of the most precious places and one of my favorite places of impact was in Russia. I had an opportunity two years ago to be a part of a humanitarian team. And I was a female vocalist, vocalist, and we had two male vocalists, a tap dancer from New York, African-American dancer from Florida, all this mixture of the arts. It was like a cultural fusion. Mm -hmm. And 
the U.S. Embassy of Moscow invited us. And one of our sponsors was Delta and a huge oil company in Siberia. And we were actually there for four days. Oh, Ron, I get excited about it. I talk really fast sometimes when I get excited. <laughs> but Most of us do. <laughs> we were there, and we engaged the Russian people in four cities with our art. And so I taught them songs, and, and Ron, they're amazing. It was so much love. I don't speak Russian. They didn't speak English. I had a translator, but we knew love. They, mm -hmm. We knew our hearts. Mm -hmm. You know, people know you sometimes without you saying a word. That's right. You feel an energy. Mm -hmm. And so in four cities, we engaged and connected. And before we left each city, we produced a show of everything that they learned. So from the age of six to 76 was our oldest in the workshops. We just loved on each other and grew with our arts and, and, and just connected. And that's why it saddens me when I see so much that's being said about that which is not even known by so many people who don't know what it's like to really hug a Russian person, get to know a Russian person, even if it's through a translator. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the we were on TV, on television, in their paper. I don't know if the translator was saying everything I told him to say. <laughs> you a trustee did. I trusted him. Yeah, you a trustee <laughs> did. Okay, so you've opened for some groups too. You, you, you have sang so much, you have a good music career, but tell me about some of the people you opened for. I opened for Al Green. Yeah. That was really Boy, fun. I'll bet. That was really fun. I mean, that's an honor. When they said, how did that come about now? A gentleman, I was singing, and he was in the audience, and he said, Kim, would you be possibly um, willing to open for Al Green? And I, I, I just had to think. Did you, you know, say which Al Green? For half say <laughs> <laughs> The Al Green? I was like, love and happiness, yeah, Al Green? Right. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll think about it, and I'll get back with you, yes. Right. And, and, and we opened and did a 45-minute show for Al. Mm -hmm. We did. We, we got the crowd going, Ron. I bet. And it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. But you know what's so funny? I didn't even get a picture with him. Uh -huh. And more people come up to me and say, hey, are you that Harry Connick Jr. girl? They Google the Harry Connick Jr. girl that sang at last in Savannah, and I come up. Hmm. A bride came here for a destination wedding, and that's how she found me. So you sing at weddings? Yes. Wow. Well, that is a celebration for you. It is a celebration. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, that's a special moment. What's your favorite song to sing? Anywhere, anytime, anyhow. What's your favorite song to sing? Any song, anywhere, anyhow. Anytime. Somebody says, sing it. This is the last song you're going to ever sing, sister. What is it? Amazing Grace. Well, all right. Amazing Grace. That's the one. strong. 
It is strong. See, you people will turn out this this uh, coming Thursday. And <laughs> if you can, you need to be there. And I'm going to sing that next Thursday. And that's also on my um, CD. Mm -hmm. And another song, Ron, that means a lot to me is Let There Be Peace on Earth and Let It Begin oh, With Me. Yeah. It begins with me. Mm -hmm. It begins with you, Ron. Yeah. Yeah. It really mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. And each and every one of you. <laughs> so it's your first trip to our town. You know what I first just remembered? Through. A few years ago, I was at the um, changing of the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Okay. And I think the gentleman's name was Spencer. Mm -hmm. And sp and my, my band and I, we played for that function oh, that night. Okay. And I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that, but that was years ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe in 2006. And it was so much fun. Emily Kite is a friend of mine who happens to be an attorney in Dublin. Mm, yes. And Emily invited me to be the entertainment, and we had so much fun. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Well, all right. But I really forgot about it. Well, if you talk long enough, you remember a little more. Then. I know. This gray is not a gimmick. <laughs> it's really it's gray. It's part of the attire. I totally forgot. It's natural. <laughs> well, you know, you've enjoyed a lot of life so far. I have a lot more to enjoy, I trust. Yes. And we get to enjoy it with you next Thursday again. I know. I can't wait. Yeah, we're looking forward to it as well. It's been a pleasure to speak with you. It's been fun. I thank you, Ron. Thank you. And I invite everybody, everybody, come to Savannah, okay? Call me. Call me when you come. My number is 224-SING, area code 912. It really is, Ron. I believe it. it. Yeah. You <laughs> sing because you're happy. I sing because I'm free. Thank you for joining us. We'll be right back. Thank you.